Hello friends, welcome back to your own YouTube channel Achievers Data Engineering. My name is Gyanendra and this is part 10 of Azure Data Factory tutorial series. In this video, we will discuss about how to copy data from an on-prem solution to a cloud using Azure Data Factory. So if you have watched my previous tutorials on this playlist, then you might have seen that we used a copy activity to perform a data movement from blob storage and we copied it into a SQL Server table. Now in this video, we are going to copy a data from an on-prem SQL and then we will publish it on the cloud. So let's get started. All right, guys. So if you are following along to this tutorial series, then you must have watched my previous video, part number five, in which we created a copy activity and using copy activity, we performed a data movement and we you know, uh, copied some data from CSV file stored on the blob storage. And we finally push that data into a table into the SQL server. Now this data movement was performed on the Azure itself. And in order to perform that data trans data movement, uh, we were able to utilize uh, the integration runtime that we already have that was auto resolve integration runtime. Now, whenever we are creating Azure data factory, this auto resolve integration runtime is created by default. However, when we want to perform a data movement from an on-prem solution, when I'm saying on-prem solution, that, that means a SQL server or any data source, which is not available over a public internet, or we need to reach out, uh, we need to go into a local, uh, local network. Uh, for example, I have created an on-prem solution, an on-prem SQL server that is available only in my local. It is not on the cloud and I cannot access it using any, you know, any way over the public internet. Now, when we want to perform a data movement from an on-prem solution to the cloud, then this simple copy activity, the simple process that we created earlier won't work. There are few more steps that we need to do. In order to do that, we need to install and set up the self-hosted integration runtime. So let's understand why it is required and how does it work. I hope this particular diagram would be very helpful in understanding how does this self-hosted integration runtime works and why it is required. So as I mentioned, when we are performing any data movement, so let me just explain you this first. Uh, so whatever we are seeing in the upper box, it is representing the Azure or the cloud world. And whatever we are seeing in the below rectangle box, it is representing the local environment or the on-prem solution. Now. In this scenario, we have an on-prem storage here. And let's say we have a cloud solution here and we have a cloud storage or a cloud database there. Now, in an instance, when we are performing a data movement cloud to cloud, uh, like there are two different databases and we are performing the data movement. In that scenario, whatever infrastructure, uh, whatever compute infrastructure is required, for example, memory or CPU, that is provided by Azure integration runtime itself, which we, which we already saw in the data factory, this is already created and it provides a compute infrastructure in the background. However, when we are talking about copying a data from an on-prem solution and push it to the cloud, in that scenario, what we need to do is, we need to understand the security, we need to uh, you know, take care of the data encryption when we are transferring data from on-prem to, you know, uh, to internet in, in the Azure. So, and that scenario, we need a self-hosted integration runtime that we can install on a local server within the same network where we have that on-prem solution. Now, having this self-hosted integration runtime will take care of all the compute infrastructure and it will perform the data movement from on-prem solution to Azure in an encrypted manner. So that data security is also, you know, uh, data is also protected and uh, data can be moved from an on-prem solution to the cloud. Now let's talk about how to set up integration runtime. Uh, so what we need to do is inside the Azure Data Factory, go into the Manage tab and under Integration Runtimes, click on New. Now once we click on New, we will get two options, Azure Self-Hosted and Azure SSIS. So we'll select Azure. Now say Continue. And inside that, we will select Self-Hosted Integration Runtime. There are some other options available that we will talk about in our upcoming videos. For now, I'll just say continue and it will ask us to provide an integration runtime. So maybe I'll say on-prem and then I'll say IR and we can provide a description if we want and type would be self-hosted, just hit on create. Now, once we will hit on create, it will ask, it, it will provide us two options. Option one is to express setup 
and we can click on this and it will you know start doing the setup and all now option two is to manually set manual setup here we need to download and install the integration runtime and then finally we need to provide these keys so i have already downloaded uh, this particular integration runtime and installation is in progress so let's just wait for a few more seconds while this installation is in progress and then we will proceed further all right so installation has finished and i'll just click on finish and let's wait okay now all we need to do is here we need to provide the authentication key so what i can do here whatever keys that i'm getting i'll just go ahead and copy this and i will paste these keys here and say register now again let's wait for a few more seconds while it is you know registering now based on that key it has you know identified that from which particular azure data factory it got connected i can just hit finish and it will register and connect with the cloud let's wait for a few more seconds all right so now integration runtime is successfully registered and uh, i can just go ahead and you know close it or i can launch the configuration manager or uh, it's already done i can maybe just minimize it for now now i can close it here and you can see it will reflect its status so let's see just refresh it now it is up and running so now what does it mean is whatever connection that we have set up between an on-prem and the cloud it is set up and it is up and running now there are a few more settings that we can you know see here right now number one is nodes so what does it mean is right now we have installed only one node and it will allow 14 co-current jobs to, you know at, at a single point of time it can run 14 jobs now one thing is to understand is that because we have installed it on our local machine or in a local server so whenever it is doing a data transformation or sorry data movement from an on-prem to the cloud then it will utilize the resources of our server or the local machine where we have installed for example it will utilize the cpu or the memory of our local machine so that's why we need to be very you know mindful in on which particular server we are installing in order to help that microsoft has already provided some system requirement configuration that we need to have at least this much configuration wherever we are installing that so that we are you know uh, successfully we are able to run it and in an optimized manner so i'll just come back to the settings uh, we have an option to auto update uh, if we have enabled this so whenever there are some updates coming self hosted integration runtime will auto update in the background we can also enable the share so what we can do is let's say we are running one or more you know data factories and we are performing some sort of you know data movement from on-prem to the cloud now earlier there was a limitation that we can have only one integration runtime connected with one azure data factory but now what we can do is we can install one integration runtime and we can connect multiple data factories with that so all we need to do is whenever let's say we already have one integration runtime installed and let's say we we have created any other pipeline or any other azure data factory we can go into sharing click on grant permission and whatever data factories are there we will be able to select it and we will be able to share the same integration runtime over there i'll just click cancel for now so these are the few important things that we should know uh, while setting up the integration runtime now let's go ahead and set up the pipeline so that we can perform a data movement from an on-prem to the cloud using self-hosted integration runtime all right in order to create a pipeline i'll just go ahead and hit new and add a pipeline and then add the copy activity onto the canvas let me collapse these options now uh, as we did in the previous video we'll have to create all data set and source so let me just go ahead and quickly create a new link service now because in this scenario we are going to connect with our sql database now that is not on azure that is in my local on-prem so instead of going into azure i'll select database and here i will select this particular sql server option and say continue maybe i'll say on-prem or let's say i'll say link service underscore on-prem sql and one important thing is to notice that from here i'm not going to select this auto resolve integration runtime rather i'll select this particular integration runtime that we created 
So what I will do, I need to provide rest of the details. So I'll just open this and let's take the server name. There we go. I'll copy the server name. It's nothing but my machine name. Then database name, I'm going to take this one. And I'll keep the SQL authentication and provide my username and password. Now, uh, before hitting create, I'll just say test connection. Let's wait for a few more seconds while it is testing the connection. Okay, so connection successful. I'll just go ahead and hit create. All right, so our source link service is all, all is created now. And our destination link service is kind of already created because in our previous video, we created a link service in which we copy the data. So now I'll go into the author mode again, select this copy activity, hit source and create a new data set. Now data set is again going to be the database, a SQL database. So I'll select that, say continue. And I'll say, let's say data set source and then press table. And I'll select this particular link service that we just created. And now it is asking to select a table name. So maybe I'll just copy this table name here, dim customer. Remove these brackets. And I'll go ahead and select the table. And I'll select this option that says import schema from the connection store and say OK. All right, so our source data set and linked service is created. All right, now let's create the sync data set. So I'll click on sync and hit new for data set. Now in this scenario, our data set is going from Azure SQL. So I'll select Azure and select Azure SQL database, say continue. Uh, name I'll maybe give, let's say data set underscore sync underscore test TBL. And then I'll select the link service. And here, because I haven't created any table in the source database, I'll leave it blank and hit OK. Now, at this point of time, what we can do in the previous video, we specified a table name because we uh, we proactively created that table into the source. But here, I'm not going to create a table. Rather, I'll select this option that says table option and auto create table. Now, when, when I'm selecting this option, I need to provide a table name also. So I'll just hit open the existing data set, go into the table name, and here I'll define a schema, say DBO, and I'll say, let's say customer, customer table. And then I'll just go back here. Now our source and sync, both data sets are done. I'll just go into the mapping and say import a schema. And now because we did not create any table in the destination, it is auto created by Azure Data Factory based on whatever we are getting from the dest uh, from the source. So column names are going to be the exactly same. Uh, we don't have to do any mapping and it's all done. I can just go ahead and hit publish and publish all the changes. Let's wait for a few more seconds while it is publishing. All right, so our all the changes that we have done in the pipeline are published now. So what we can do, we can close this particular option, go into the pipeline, and now we can run this pipeline. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and hit on debug, and then let's wait while it is processing so that its data will be processed from on-prem SQL to our Azure Cloud SQL. All right, so as you can see, this pipeline got executed successfully. Now, if we go back to our Azure SQL database, so let me log into the SQL database again. Query editor. All right, now we should be able to see a new table that we just created. I can just say, select star from and I can say dbo dot customer table and just hit run. 
and we can see all the data that we had in our local file in our local sql server in this particular table is now moved into our sql azure sql database all right guys i hope you like the content if yes please go ahead and hit the like button and do subscribe to my youtube channel to stay up to date on any latest video that i upload thank you for watching keep learning have a great day